Hey, you guys. So, earlier, uh, someone left me a comment on one of my videos, and they said, I really enjoy when you talk about or share about yourself, I guess, meaning some of my life experiences, stuff like that, and Shanann, meaning Shanann Watts, in that case. And I was like, oh, wow, well, thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate that. And no sooner than I read that, I went on to my Facebook. And, you know, periodically, I'm, I make videos about a lot of stuff on this channel. And dealing with the turbulence in my life. And, you know, it's been hard the last three years trying to stay consistent and yes, I made videos about that case and I still feel very strongly about it. But when you are dealing with something that heavy, traumatic, tragic, emotional, sometimes you have to put it away for a while and regroup yourself and do other things and come back to it. Well, this afternoon, <clears throat> um, or after I saw that comment on my YouTube, later I went over to my Facebook. And I belong to a couple of groups that support Shanann Watts and her family. And I'm not super active in those groups, but I do see their posts on my newsfeed. And something, I don't, I don't know, you know what really goes on in those groups as far as you know who's who and what's what I don't like any groups that sit up and consistently bash or nitpick this woman and I will leave the group if I see that's what it's about well I had it narrowed down to a couple that felt like they were a support group you know a tribute group and anyway tonight something comes across my news feed and I see this woman's comment where she is saying it's a it's a photo of the two little girls Bella and Cece and the caption Shanann has said oh you know Cece just said that she wanted pro bars and she captioned it all cute like Cece said it and she's like, it's a good thing I always carry them in my purse. You know, and that was it, the photograph, right? Well, there's this woman's comment and she's like, you know, I usually support Shanann because I know that people talk ugly about her, but I just have to ask. Or mention if these are the only if these are the type of snacks she was giving the girls wasn't she concerned about all the sugar that could possibly be in just one of those bars wasn't she afraid of them being diabetic I mean what gives here and she worded it just like that right <laughs> and I'm just like oh you know, you finally get to a point where you just, you desensitize from the people who are going to continue to take this to an ignorant place, to a nitpicking place, to a dumbass place. You finally desensitize yourself to it, but sometimes it's still just, just the, the ignorance to me, okay? It's not that these types of questions about children and concern for children are ignorant, but given the circumstances and everything that we all know is surrounding it, it just rubs my nerves the wrong fucking way, okay? Sometimes, still. And so I proceeded to answer that woman's question for her, but it 
they declined to allow it. The administration of the group. Not that I said anything rude or bad. They just, I guess they just didn't like my answer. So I decided that I would bring it to my YouTube channel and answer that question for her about what gives. Well, let's break this down. Okay. Two things people are constantly saying and giving Shanann, even though she's been gone almost six years or six years now, since 2018, and all the circumstances surrounding that, and all the things people bash her for and nitpick her for and have turned her life into a fucking circus. <clears throat> One thing especially that I constantly hear. Yes, people are always, always trying to find some kind of loophole in her mothering. Some kind of always trying to find fault with her as a mother. And the second thing is they're always trying to find fault with her career choice. Her job. And the two things together, mothering and career. Okay. There was a woman that also commented couple of comments below this other woman and says yeah always one for the quick advertisement of her product it's like why couldn't she just be a mother to her kids okay we're gonna break this down in this video the stupidity on these people I'm sorry, it just never ceases to astonish me. And I thought I was beyond that. I thought I was beyond being surprised by stupidity and ignorance and hatefulness and lack of empathy and disregard. Um, the crazy shit and levels people are on in this world. But I can still be astonished. You know what? And I've gone through a lot in the last couple of years, especially. I've gone through a lot the last seven or eight years. Major things, chaos, crisis, losing things, grief, partner dying, family members dying, all kinds of shit. And in the last two years especially, it has been major transformation time for me. Working through all kinds of anger, resentments, emotional issues, grief loss of my partner last year, um, losing my way in middle age and having to start over. And so it's been a very transformative time for me. And, you know, I've always been a person that's on the highly spiritual side, you know, here really just to stay in my lane and work on me. And I keep realizing more and more as time goes on. And, you know, Life is a growth process. We're going to make mistakes along the way. We're going to say shit. We're going to have opinions that might be, you know, sometimes we might jump to conclusions or make assumptions or be really rooted in something out of fear or out of lack of knowledge or just not, not having grown to that level yet. Can't, unable to see it in that dimension yet. Not on that frequency yet. It's okay. I, I, I want to say that, that I'm really, I've had to move through so many traumatic family issues and so many fucking painful things, especially all coming to a head in the last couple of years. Um, getting sick myself, feeling like I was near death several times. All of that has really transformed me. Okay, and you, you do get to a point where at a certain age, a certain level of emotional maturity, you just really want to let shit go. You you want to work through all the pain, the grief, the anger, the resentments, and you don't want to hold any of that in your body anymore. 
you're not really about all of that. It's not what's in your core. It's not your personality. That's not for me anyway. I am really about peace and balance and the beautiful things in life and trying to see the beautiful things about other people. I'm really about that, okay? That's that's where the lane I try to stay in and the frequency I try to stay on. However, I got news for you. If you're one of those people, there are people out there that think that just because you're in that lane and that energy that they can throw shit at you, they can mock you, pick on you, trample you, fuck with you, and that you're going to get all up in your head or have any shame whatsoever or hesitation in fucking getting fierce right back with them. I have no trouble with it whatsoever. When I need to say something or stand my ground on something, that's just, that's, that's going to happen. I don't give a shit how spiritual, what cloud I'm floating on or how peaceful I am or because I don't let people control me that way. They don't control my mind that way. I don't let people manipulate me or mentally, emotionally imprison me whatsoever. I know who I am. People external to me do not tell me who I am. They don't tell me how I'm supposed to feel about myself. <clears throat> I've had to work on that long and hard. They don't shame me into thinking that I can't have two feelings at once. They don't they don't manipulate or gaslight. I've already been there and done all that. Lots of experience with it. So I just, I just want to get that across. Is that. And if you go through stuff like that. I'm here to encourage you. Not to let that happen to you either. That. Just because. You are a person who is wanting to achieve more peace. And balance in your life. And harmony. And you want to stay on a higher frequency and a beautiful frequency and you want to see the best in people and you want to keep it that way. And you really have a good heart and soul and a lot of love in your heart. That still does not mean <clears throat> for one second that that's not genuine, it's not authentic, it's not real, it's fake. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. If you have to break real and raw on somebody's ass every now and then. Don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Because there's people out here that can control you that way. Have you all up in your head and thinking you're a bad person. And oh my goodness, I can't possibly be kind and loving and spiritual and empathic and care about others. And if I stand my ground... Or if I get pissed off or petty or I say this or that every now and then. Yeah, the fuck you can. Yes, the fuck you can. You can be all of it. Because we are some multidimensional motherfuckers. Here to experience <clears throat> all types of emotions and circumstances. And learn and grow along the way. Okay? And um, you know what's in your heart. You know what your intentions are. You know how you live every day. You know what your practices are. You know how you treat your loved ones and how you respect them and care for them and empathize. And you know how you operate. So it doesn't make a shit what anybody else tries to tell you or how the fuck they try to make you feel just because you might have got pissed off one day and had to say some shit. Or because you have many dimensions to your personality. Like me, for instance, it's best for me in order to keep my balance in reality in real life. And wake up and have a pleasant morning and feel peaceful and balanced. And be more in tune with myself. Therefore, more in tune with my relatives and my loved ones. And just be on a a well-balanced vibration it's better for me to get sassy in my videos sometimes it's better for me to spit out some shit and have that little attitude 
in a certain way that I can channel it into rather than keep it stored inside. Whether than, well, people will think badly of me and they'll think that I'm horrible and selfish and I'm that way all the time and that I'm crazy or that I treat my family badly or they'll make judgments about me. If they can't get it and understand what frequency you're on and whatever medium you choose to, and if they can't understand that human beings are, there's no one way that we're supposed to be all the time. As long as we are respecting other people, not bringing harm to them, stomping on them, that kind of thing. There's no one set way we have to be all the time just because we're here on earth and some of us are very introspective and I hate to use these buzzwords that people have taken and run in the ground like awakening and ascension and you know people just oh they take all this stuff and they fight about it and they make fun of it and I get so sick of it but just because you are a person who looks inward and as time goes on through your life you really do feel like you can literally feel it in your wiring in your brain you can feel the wiring rewiring itself psychologically working on yourself confronting your issues examining who you are self inventory and spiritually doing the same thing. And you can literally feel it as the levels go, as time goes on. You can feel each new dimension of consciousness, the awareness coming online, waking up to that new level and the next level and the next level. If you're one of those people, like myself, who feels that, that's perfectly fine. And it doesn't mean you mean you have to be any set way. It doesn't mean just because you are working on a self-actualization process and you want to get closer to that which is good, that which is higher than yourself, your higher power or higher self, doesn't mean that while you're in this human form that you're not going to say some shit from time to time. And it doesn't mean a damn thing. It doesn't mean that all that spiritual work and everything that you're about is not just as fucking authentic. It is. It is. It doesn't mean that your heart isn't pure and golden and loving. It is. But you need to say what the fuck you need to say sometimes. It's all the same. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you will know that for yourself. I've had to work on this long and hard. You will know that, you know, and you don't have to fight with anybody about it. You don't have to prove it to them. You don't have to say nothing. It's hard to get to that point where you don't care. Let them mumble among themselves. Let them think what they want to until their heart is content. It doesn't matter. You know. You know how you operate. You know that your soul is beautiful. And that the people around you in your everyday life love you, respect you, and you vice versa, love and respect them. And you know that you go out of your way to be thoughtful and kind and empathic and compassionate to them. And you have a great time with that and everything is fine in that regard. You know that's who you are. Regardless of what you get pissed off and have to stand up for every now and then or when you get in a petty mood, as all humans do sometimes, and you say some fucked up shit, or when you have to get really fierce about something. Now, granted, the more you heal and the more you rise in your ascension process and work on yourself, the less you will feel the need to do certain things outside of that high-frequency energy, the less inclined you will be to even react to such shit. But I'm just saying, if the situation arises, no, we're not doing that anymore. We're not dealing with that anymore. We're not going to be gaslighted anymore. We're not going to feel fucked up about a bunch of shit. It is so far beyond all of that. 
okay that com that's too confining confines people to little boxes you know what i'm saying now there are certain things that we do change about ourselves as we become more healed and higher in frequency we become less reactive <clears throat> more balanced more peaceful more understanding of human nature and all of its flaws and defects and quirks and we just see that as a part of it it's a part of the whole process we're less angry about the things that have happened to us yes all that comes into our life but there will be people that try to trigger you back into that and jerk you around and say oh i thought you had changed or you know there's gonna be people that just all that kind of crap and i'm just here to say fuck that just keep going just be who you are and you will constantly be led on that path you will be protected keep your faith and your light where it has been focused keep that strong connection and you'll be fine don't worry about all of that <clears throat> don't let them talk you out of being you and delivering the message you need to deliver or saying what you need to say no matter how it comes across sometimes spirit can even put that upon our heart that it might need to come across a little bit more fierce for some people in order for them to be reached it might need to come across a little bit more jokingly for some people because that's maybe how they can be reached maybe sweeter for some maybe sarcastically for some you just never know we have to keep our perspective open and ignorance keeps us closed or well, let them be closed whatever they want to do but you just never know why it is upon your spirit to talk in a certain way at a certain time or push a certain energy out at a certain time that's that as long as you know you're pure of heart and how you operate and that you are not at ever at any time intentionally purposely trying to cause people pain and distress and confusion and chaos it's all to the good it's all to the good just keep keep doing what you do now back to shenan and these comments on facebook okay her mothering and her job her mothering and her fucking career all right let's talk about this what gives and then the second person woman chiming in and saying oh yeah any chance she gets for advertising a quick advert a quick marketing plot you know way to push her products why can't she just be a mom to those kids always using those kids and her husband or whatever and anytime she can slip in her products all right let's talk about that here's the way I see it which one of these dumbass comments should I answer first um the way I see it is <clears throat> that was her job that was her career choice a lot of times we as humans especially in our 30s like Shanann was I'm approaching 50 now whew, but especially at that time part of us is still searching part of us is fully mature some of us is maturing along the way and other parts of us is still growing it's still searching for ourselves and we're going to make mistakes we're gonna do things along the way and we may cycle through different jobs different careers trying to get ourselves to that ideal spot that can meet several balances at once if we are mothers we have family we're juggling a lot of things at once we're gonna try a lot of us depending on your personality your background your your nature we're gonna try though to find a balance of something because we have to make an income now unless we're lucky enough to be stay-at-home moms unless we can just stay home we have to make an income but we also have young children 
great many of us are going to try to find something that not only we can go do every day that doesn't drag us down, physically wear us down, that just something that suits our energy level, our personality. A lot of times, you know, a lot of us aren't always lucky enough, whether we didn't go to school for it or whatever, whatever. A lot of times in this life, we just have to do jobs just because it's a fucking job and we got to get a paycheck and we can't stand that job. I've always, even though, you know, I did get my college degree, I didn't go back and finish the higher degree. As long as I'm having to do something that I don't classify as a career, but just kind of a, a an odd job, a regular job just to get by until I can finish that higher degree or actually, you know, go down a path that is something more fulfilling. I still always try to find work that suits me, that suits my personality, that, you know, helps me fulfill something inside that so I can feel that it's at least somewhat fulfilling if I'm going to spend my fucking biggest part of my life there doing that to make a living then I better be getting something out of it too so I'm going to at least try to find something knowing it may not be my ideal job choice my ideal dream career but I'm going to try to find a balance of well okay I have to take this kind of job right now so I'm going to try to find something that is at least somewhat, there's something in it that I'm passionate about or that makes me feel fulfilled or that I enjoy doing throughout the day or that brings something to life in me and meets at least some of that. Okay, so Shanann as a mother, and then when I had kids, they're grown now, but back then I had to think about all those things, right? So... You're going to try to meet the balance of, if you have kids, you're going to try to find something that, like I just talked about, not that you're putting self first, because a lot of people would say, well, if you have two kids, you just take any job you can, and you take the one that you can have the most hours with your kids, and, <clears throat> or, you know, whatever. I'm just saying... That's exactly the balances that this woman was trying to figure out for herself. She had other work before this, a Lavelle career, um, selling Thrive, where she could work from home. But that was taking hours away from her children. In her heart, she was trying to find those damn balances and hustle and juggle like a lot of mothers have to do. Not that she was putting herself first, but there's a part of us that, yes, is thinking about us. How's this going to affect my energy? How's it going to affect my life? How am I going to feel doing it? Do I fit into this job? Can I, you know, and that is not too selfish, okay? Because you have to look at it this way. Sorry, y'all, the lighting in here is weird. It's making my face look splotchy. You have to think about it this way. If you're not okay, they're not okay. If you don't at least somewhat enjoy what you're doing all day for a fucking living, and it, you come home just exhausted and miserable and pissed off, and all you want to do is fucking hit the shower and fall in the bed, um, and the stress at work, and the, you know, if you're not in some kind of at least something about it you enjoy and it's good and it brings you peace and fulfillment and perks and you know then it's gonna fucking impact your kids it's gonna impact your ability to even parent them it's gonna impact a lot so that is important so people would say well when you have kids you just give up all that you don't think about yourself you don't think about what you want you just go out and do what you got to do to make the dough Okay, but for the most part, yeah, we do. We try to set our life up in a certain way where we can think about ourselves because it's healthier for our damn children. So don't ever get that twisted. Thinking about yourself is healthier for your child. Thinking about your well-being, your peace of mind, and how you spend your day. So 
she was trying to meet a lot of these balances. Find something for herself that she enjoyed doing until maybe she found her way into a different career in her 40s. I know in my 30s, I wasn't doing exactly what I wanted to be doing. And I always had it in my head that by the time I reached 40, I would shift my plan. You know, I needed to be planning along the way. This woman was literally still finding herself. Looking back to me, 30, 32, 34, that's still a baby. You know what I'm saying? She was still growing and learning and examining, exploring and trying things. And sometimes you have to do that in life. No matter what anyone else thinks. You have to cycle through a few jobs. You have to cycle through a few careers. Try a few things out. Some people aren't brave enough to do that. They just hang on to the same old job they can't fucking stand forever. They're miserable. They shuffle home. They hate looking, getting up in the mornings. They don't look forward to it. And it's just like that their whole lives. You know, I understand being responsible. And I understand some of us got to do what we got to do. But if you're presented with the opportunity to do something different, why not take it? And she did. She was brave enough to make that change. Second balance. She has children. Here's where the children come in again. Number one, taking care of yourself and making sure that you are mentally, emotionally, and uh, physically well balanced. And at least somewhat in alignment with what you want to be doing. Okay, that's going to impact your kids. But secondly, <clears throat> this career path choice would give her the ability to be with her girls more. Okay, this would give her flexibility in her schedule, working from home, her office at home. Same thing with me. I always tried to work jobs that would give me flexibility. Um, where I could set my hours or whatever, what have you, in case of emergencies with the kids or in case whatever, what have you. Um, and people will say, well, she sent her kids to daycare. Okay. So what? She's running a business. Don't know exactly how many hours a day she did that, but I don't see anything unreasonable about that. Even if one of the reasons you chose this career path was so that you could have more family time, so that you could have more flexibility in your day for your family in case there were emergencies or whatnot. I still don't see a damn thing wrong with, hey, I got to get really serious about this job. It is my job. I have to be a professional. My office is here in the home. I can't have two screaming little kids here all day. I'm gonna take them to daycare a few hours. Maybe not as long as other people with outside jobs might take their kids to daycare. Maybe she only did half days. Maybe she did quarter days. I don't freaking know. Just saying perspective, perspective. Nothing wrong with it if she sent them to daycare, to school full time. They need that. Think of how bored little kids would get cooped up in the house with their mother all day trying to do her job. Trying to promote and make phone calls and do shipping and deal with business. <clears throat> it's her job. But yet, there's two toddlers all day long. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Screaming, whining, fighting, playing, danger. Imagine trying to work from home and watch toddlers all day. Even if it's one of the main reasons in your heart that you wanted to take this particular job and have more time for your family. I can still see trying to run my office at home and um, I need to set up some business hours. Even if it's only half days, they go to daycare and I can handle the rest of the day or, you know, whatever. Or even if they went full days, still yet. She was trying to set up some balances so that when she did have time with her family, when it was off hours or she could, she could modify however she wanted to. If she was the boss, she set the hours. She could say, hey, today y'all aren't going. I'm going to take the day off and we're going to spend this time together. 
she could pick them up early or she could she could do whatever she wanted i'm just saying we have to think about this from a certain perspective and these people are coming from this i don't know where they're fucking coming from all right so <clears throat> as far as her career choice and these comments of always trying to slip in an advertisement for her products instead of just being a mom And they really want to take this to a nasty place. They really want, these particular people really want to make this woman just look like the cruelest, most shallow, <clears throat> most empty woman who didn't love her kids and didn't care about her children and who was just this cold-hearted, selfish. But I'm just like, where the fuck are these people coming from? It was like, they're really putting Shanann, rest her soul, in a position where she cannot win no matter what she did. And I think you bitches suck for that. All the way. <laughs> I think you're like a bunch of lame biddies, like kindergartners with zero emotional intelligence with really nothing better to do in your life N not looking at your own wounds and your own bitterness and your own issues <clears throat> probably most of them don't even have kids um anyway all right so let's keep breaking this down shenan and her career choice all right i'm gonna stick with that for now i'll get back to the lady and her comment about the pro bars and the sugar and isn't she afraid of diabetes and why was she giving that to them and what gives here we'll get back to that another day or maybe later in this video if we have time or maybe in a part two definitely in a part two if not in this video all right now let's let's focus on the job thing here for mothers and their careers and choices I mean, she can't win. If she just laid on her ass and wasn't motivated and didn't have all that ambition and drive, she wouldn't have been able to win that either. They would have attacked her for that. Did you not want the woman to make money? Did you, what is it? Did y'all not want her to have ambition? Did you not want her to aspire to um, a good life for her children and whatever the taste that she had, whether it was fancy or not, who gives a shit? Did you just not want her to have that? Is it envy? Like, what is it? I think a lot of it is. I think there are a lot of women out there that, and it's predominantly women bashing Shanann Watts. Believe it or not, yes. There are some men out there. Several of them have YouTube channels that are just off their rocker um, about how they attack her and how they view her. And I don't know if they're projecting their own relationship onto this woman and, you know, what happened to them or what the hell. But um, it's predominantly women who attack and ridicule and shame and nitpick Shannon Watts. It's crazy. And one of them, I've talked about before in other videos, claims herself to be a behavioral therapist, specializing in children's behavior, I think, or something like that. And she studied the Watts case for part of her, um, part of her degree. Um, and I couldn't believe the things that I ran into on her channel and the lame way that she spoke about Shanann and the voices and just her voice and the way that 
she would say things to try and rile the audience to try and rile people against this deceased woman and her parenting and the way she set her videos up and clipped things out to look like and give context to them take them way out of context and this woman claims herself to be a behavioral therapist and i just thought that's pretty fucking scary do her clients know that I mean, yeah, you can look at it in the perspective. She's trying to make everyone believe that, oh, I'm putting together this presentation because I just want <clears throat> the life of these little girls to be known. And <clears throat> I just feel that they were so mistreated by their mother. And I really want to um, educate people about behavioral things in children and bullshit under that guise under that but really underneath it all she is mocking making fun of taunting tormenting this deceased woman who was murdered along with her little girls lame and if I were her client, and I, you know, I'm like, I wonder if her clients know this because I would be looking at it from a different perspective, not just, oh, that's my therapist and she has this YouTube channel and this is her way of analyzing behavior and this is her way of teaching. Look here. That's another reason I'm not in the professional world right now because I like to say what I need to say. But since you chose that career path, if that's what you do, um, I'd be looking at it from a point of view of, damn, if my therapist would do that and sit there and just that mocking, um, to me, it was really striking me. <laughs> has really immature and really something off about it. I think she's the one with the fucking issues, not Shanann Watts. And I believe this channel is called Watts the Obsession. I was trying to remember who the person was that said she was a behavioral therapist. And she's the one with all the vocal for like, yeah with all the vocal fry and just, oh my God, you know, I don't want to come across as judgmental. However, we have to look bullshit. You're not fooling me. And I can only take so much of that and I have to get out of there. But I wanted to see like, where people are really taking it like really so anyway let's get back on topic here Shanann's career and her job choice and being a mother and all the things that go through your mind and your heart when you are a mother and trying to juggle many things at one time and find those balances in your life as Shanann was trying to do. Okay. So she found this career selling Thrive for LaBelle. She found something that at the time. Now we have to understand. We keep growing in life. We might be into something at 28, 29. That at 32. We have long outgrown and discovered that. Hey, that might not have been the best choice. That might not have been the best career path. That might not have been the healthiest stuff. Whatever. But at that time, she believed with her heart and soul that she was doing something to help and encourage others. She believed in the, those products to be healthy and provide nourishment. She believed in the entire situation. Okay, 
And it worked for her life at that time, where she was mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, as a mother. And at that time in her life, it worked for her. Okay. It gave her the freedom and flexibility that she needed in her life to create balance. It gave her something in her heart and her soul that she felt purposeful. She felt she felt it fulfilling and to be able to start reaching out to the public and you know networking like that and coming into her own sharing vulnerable bits of herself i could see self actualization process written all over shenan watts i don't care whether they could fucking see it or not these people i could see it in her videos I could see the genuine en energy coming from her. No matter what the exterior and the salesperson and, you know, the fancy taste and so what. I could hear it in her voice and in certain body movements, her energy, when she would express herself. That she was a person who was longing to continue growing. Finding herself as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, in her career and in all ways. And I know what that feels like because I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like. And it takes one to know one. You can see it. You can feel it. So, as far as this whole shit of taking any opportunity she can to make it into a sales pitch... Why can't she just love her kids? Why can't she just be a mom? Well, motherfucker, you gonna pay the bills for her? Why can't why can't you just be a mom? Why do you work? Why do you have the job you do? I mean, that's just some answers to the to these folks' question on Facebook. Why do you have the job you do? Uh oh, my phone is going to grayscale. Oh, no. I wonder if it's going to show up gray. I have my phone set on a bedtime and it does this. And I'm afraid that if I pull the screen down to try to turn it off, that it's going to cut my video off before I'm ready. So I may have to finish this in gray if it turns out gray. I'm sorry, but that's why. So, yeah, that's my that's that's what I say to that. Why do you have the job you do? You know, that can go two ways. So, anybody putting out that kind of bullshit, put it right back on yourself. Put yourself in that woman's shoes. She was trying to create balance within her life. So that she could handle everything. You know, the flexibility and freedom she needed. Feeling a sense of purpose and fulfillment. She really believed in those products at the time. And was coming into her own and really finding herself. And yes, wanted to give her children a good life. With, yes, a nice house and expensive school that they were going to. Or daycare, or whatever it was. Uh, beautiful clothing. Yeah, she had nice taste. So what? She wanted to have a beautiful life experiences with her husband and daughters. So what? What is the major? Like, what's the problem there? Most of us want that. And so, with that being her job and her damn career... Naturally, when you're self-employed like that, it's a little different from just going outside the home and work stays at work and you come home and you leave that at work. When you're self-employed, sometimes you have a structured part of your day for certain business. Like she might have had part of her day for certain business 
where she needed to make phone calls. She needed to film videos. She needed to do packaging and shipping and needed the girls to be at daycare. And furthermore, how bored would those little girls get when their mommy, how awful would it be for both of them? Mommy's got to work and having to constantly jump on them or tell them, no, sit down, behave, be quiet. And Shanann's going to feel bad. The little girls are going to feel rejected. Why even be in that position? Send them to daycare if you can for a set few hours per day so you can handle business. They get to socialize. They get to have fun. They get to have their needs met instead of rejection all day while mommy is busy. Durr. <laughs> okay. Um, and then certain other parts of your life, when you're self-employed and you're still finding your way in a business of your own like that, it can take many, many years for you to get trial and error, trying different routines, trying different schedules, all kinds of shit. I've been self-employed for many, many years, two or three different types of jobs. My own house cleaning service, DoorDash for several years. I've been there and done it, okay? And I know what that's like. So maybe certain other parts of her day, you have to get in where the fuck you fit in, fool. Sorry, I almost started <laughs> rapping too short. Don't make me rap too short on y'all's ass. Okay. But you get what I'm saying? Certain other parts of your day, when you're self-employed, you get in where, the, where you fit in. You work it in where you can. Maybe this particular part of the day, you do this kind of stuff. And later on, well, this part I can do with the girls around. This part I can't. So in order to, you know, so there's not friction there and nobody gets hurt and there's not all this. They can go to school that part of the day, but, you know, this part of it, a little promotion here, a little promotion there. I can do that part of my work when they're with me. And it's really like killing two birds with one stone because my beautiful babies are with me. But at the same time... I'm getting a part of my work done that keeps this helps keeps this family going, helps bring income in. It is my fucking job. <clears throat> and so, since I can't do that part of it in the morning time when they're at school, I have to grab, since it's part of my job, I have to grab whatever opportunity I can get to promote my products. That's what I do for work. It still doesn't say a goddamn thing about how much I love my daughters, how much I love my husband, my life, how much they mean to me. Just because I'm juggling all these things at once and trying to find my way through this as a woman doesn't say a damn thing about my level of love for them. And so I'm just trying to give some perspective to this kind of thing. To these kind of people making these kind of comments. And I've been, I've, I've got, I've been in all those situations before. Lots of experience with that. Lots to say about it. Lots to share about it. Perspective. Um, but that's, that's the way I see it. That's my feelings on it. And oftentimes, ever since I have come across this case several years back, I feel very connected to the, to the spirit of Shanann. Very deeply connected to her spirit. To the energy that was surrounding her at the time. How she thought and felt. I can't explain it. I feel very, very connected to that. Um, and I haven't even mentioned Chris really in this video. I've got a lot of videos about him. Don't even get me started on what it's like to have to keep up with a partner who is emotionally immature and covert narcissistic and all kinds of twisted issues going on and 
getting more chaotic by the year and it's kind of like having an extra child and having to carry their ego and cope with their stuff and yeah it, it don't even let me get off on that we're talking about Shanann's career right now and how people nitpick and bash and all this crap so yeah um I feel like yeah I pretty much said covered what what needed to be said what I feel about it I need some lotion for my hands um that she was trying she was getting her hustle on you cannot hate a woman for hustling what the hell's wrong with you people she was literally and I I think that's what these certain types of people with I think that's what's wrong with them they envied her they wish they could even have come close or even come close to the amount of love empathy compassion vitality spirit motivation ambition on Shanann that energy they wish they could have they, there's something about them that is bitter and envious and triggered um, to attack and, and smear a beautiful, innocent, loving mother like that after her death. To have to nitpick her like that and pick her apart. I can't believe they don't have anything fucking better to do. Can't believe it. But uh, hey, Guess I can still be shocked. But yeah, that's how I feel. That's the energy I'm getting off of that. As far as her spirit, her energy at the time, her spirit now. Um, what she was kind of going through and feeling and trying to meet those balances with a very genuine and deep desire inside to be the greatest mother, the greatest wife, great at her career and trying to juggle all those things at once. You can't hate somebody for that. They're going to make mistakes along the way like we all do. They're going to have days they regret and damn, you know, I wish... I wish to die. I wish I had spent a little more time focused on this or that with the kids or this over here. But you know, I just had to get this done today. And in retrospect, you know, we we grow, we learn, we make mistakes. All parents do, all mothers do. But I believe that that she had a very deep, deep, genuine love for her daughters and her husband and life in general. And she was so wanting to have a great life with them. And she was willing to hustle for it. Why do we hustle anyway? Sometimes when we have to put in longer hours than we want to. Sometimes we have to be away from our children more than we want to. Or do things we don't want to do. Like Shanann taking a picture and mentioning the pro bars. Or filming videos and having the girls eating the pro bars. Or having Chris and the family get in on her advertisements and her marketing of her product here and there. When she's in the car with the girls or when they're out and about. Why do we hustle? Why do we, on whatever our jobs are, sometimes work longer hours than we want to. Or you know, do certain things we don't want to have to. Or... And we have kids and, you know, and, 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 and. same with her being self-employed. Sometimes she has to do it when the fuck ever she could do it. And, well, she works from home. That's her employment. And their kids live there. So, naturally, don't you think, duh, sometimes they're going to get in on it. They're going to be included. Like, why do we hustle in the first place? Why do we work so hard? Why do we stay motivated? Why? Same fucking thing she was doing. She might not have even wanted to do that. But that's a part of it. 
for her work, for her money, for her career. To care for ourselves and our families, to provide them a better life. And a lot of times the motivation deep inside is, okay, well, I'll do this as long as I need to so that perhaps we can have a better future where we do have even more time together. And then I don't have to always be hustling pro bars every chance I get. But for now, by God, that's what I'm going to do. Here, girl, get you a bite of this and smile for the camera, honey. Because we're trying to make us some money, baby girl. So we can fucking survive. So we can eat. So you can have better things in life. That's what's up. Why do we hustle? That is genuinely what is in a lot of our hearts and our minds as mothers, as humans. That, okay, well, I hate it that I have to do this right now. <clears throat> Be great if I could just not work. Be great if I could just... But I have to do this for a while. And maybe we can get our family to a better place. Where we can have more time. And maybe I won't have to be hustling these products all the time. But for right now, I believe in that with my heart and soul. And I'm finding value and purpose in it. And it's it's that it may have been that God just wanted that. Or the universe just aligned her with Thrive and Lavelle just for a few years and she was really finding herself through that. And she may have taken a whole other career had she lived. She may have blown up on social media. She may have done, changed a whole different career path. God may have been preparing her. Just, that's how it happens sometimes. We take on certain things that may only be for a season in our life just to give us some wisdom some experience some knowledge that could have been preparing her for a whole other damn career path that was way better that maybe had more family time that maybe she didn't have to you know be incorporating her work from home at all hours even with the family and whatnot but that's how it is when you're self-employed You people bashing her, you don't know that. You don't know what God or the universe or what what alignment her her energy and her life was trying to take. And none of us really know for sure. But why well, hate on a woman for working hard, for being ambitious, for clearly you can see her hustle all over everything and trying to balance it all. You know what I'm saying? This video's gotten, uh, we're just a little over an hour. I know the last one I uploaded talking about my hair was an hour and a half, an hour and 30 minutes. Those are the longest videos I've ever uploaded on YouTube. But this one, you know, I'm, I'm really glad to touch on these topics. I, you know, I see things really on social media all the time that inspire me or motivate me. Spirit comes over me and I really want to put out a message about that or talk about it. And I don't always get to do it trying to get back to that though um but this is something that spirit will not lay off about okay this is something i will always talk about i feel very connected to that woman in a very deep way her spirit and understanding her and empathizing with her on so many levels um and i feel like somebody needs to talk for her she, her voice was taken, and so were the children. And it was so unfair. She doesn't get to speak for herself. And if there are people out there that have gone through similar things, certain types of abuse and twisted-ass situations in which you were flipped over and gaslighted and fucking lied on and manipulated and made, tormented and made into a complete and total persona that you were not unfairly. 
I know what it's like to live through that. And I will not stop until I make more and more people aware of certain things. I will not stop defending people who have lived through that and speaking up and making people aware of things so that they can catch on to the people that do stuff like this. And perhaps things can change in their life. I mean, you know, I can't stand Chris Watts or the Kessinger girl. So as far as me being on some, you know, weird bandwagon of pitchforks and, you know, down with all narcissists and, you know, it, it, things are a lot more complex than that. I don't really have anything good to say about Chris Watts at all, but you, you catch my drift too. I'm not on, I'm not on, I'm not on anybody's bandwagon. I'm still trying to find myself. You know, there's a lot of these groups out here and there's a lot of these, this, that, and the other. I learn a lot from people. There's a, there's a lot of teachers and instructors I'm fond of, their work. But y'all get what I'm saying. You know, things just get, wow. Um, but as far as the energy of Shanann and her career choice and her job, lay off. Like, get a fucking life, you weirdos. <laughs> it's like, plus the perks of that job, honey, why not? trips and cars and getting to meet new people and you know that was perfect for her energy at the time and the the woman she was trying to become outgoing and assertive and you know she was really trying to find her way into that place probably coming from a place of working through insecurities when she was younger and I know myself as a woman, I've had to work through plenty of that. And when you really do start coming into your own, you will have so many haters. So many people that try to mark you as something you're not. As selfish and self-absorbed. And well, why do you got to have a career? Well, why can't you just be down here? Why can't you just do this? Why do you have to wear those clothes and have, have that attitude? And and it's completely wrong, completely unfair. Because deep within, a great many of these women who have worked so hard on themselves through their insecurities and their fears and have become more assertive and have become motivated and ambitious and powerful. A lot of them are the sweetest, most empathic, compassionate, loving hearts you will ever meet. Thoughtful and putting so much love into their children and their husbands behind the scenes and keep giving them so much energy keeping everything organized for them and clean for them and little thoughtful like like the way she had Chris's name even on a snack basket and all these little thoughtful things that is love that is a love language you know and a lot of people from the outside want to put assumptions on that or labels and 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 yet they don't even know that energy they don't even take time to look deeper, to feel more deeply. Or perhaps they themselves have never had to walk through that. They just can't relate to it at all. They can't imagine and don't have the empathy to imagine it. What, you know, what else could be going on here besides me just marking this woman as some self-absorbed, uh, money-grubbing, cold-hearted doesn't give a shit about anybody, uh, pretentious, whatever, narcissist. The fuck? Let's look deeper. Look deeper. Look even more deeply. A lot of people can't do that. So, yeah, as far as her comment... Any chance she gets to advertise her product well, so what the fuck you do when you're self-employed?
just like when I was working for DoorDash. Most days, I had a set schedule and I tried to keep that routine and I would get up very early in the morning and work throughout the day, taking breaks periodically as I needed and oftentimes stopping for family members, dealing with their crises or their need for rides or emergency situations or whatever, helping others. I kept my life flexible like that. Also, there would be days where because of circumstances or being tired or appointments, I wouldn't get to stay on that schedule. But as a self-employed person, I could have that option. So there would also be days where, oh, hey, you know, I know you and I agreed to do this today, but um, like my partner would go out with me a lot. Oh, I know we had plans for this evening, but you know, I didn't get enough work done this morning got to go out and run a few orders tonight, but you can come along with me and we'll just make it all work together. People could have said that about me while I was doing DoorDash. You know, well, she's with her partner in a lot of these photos and videos and delivering DoorDash, you know. Goodness, baby. Why she always got to be delivering orders when they're together? In fact, he would even say that sometimes, but he also drank a lot and wanted to lay around and drink a lot. He had a lot of pain, a lot of emotional problems going on. He was sick a lot. And, you know, I was always thinking, why can't you be a bit more mature about this emotionally? You know why I have to work. You know why I work a lot because you can't work as much and we have to survive. We have to eat, you know, but a lot of times addicts can live on such a low level and see that as normal crackers and beer or living in a car or, you know, a lot of times they can live on that level and see that as normal and expect you to as well. <coughs> no, sir. No, sir. I love you and I have compassion for you, but I'm not living on that fucking level. If I don't have to, I will work for it. So people are motivated by trauma, by poverty, They've seen hard times in their childhoods. You just never fucking know what a child or a person has run across in their life that is driving them to work harder, to be more motivated, to... But anyway, same thing. As a self-employed person, there would be times where I would have to incorporate my employment in with my family shit and my family time and... You know, I didn't really have a product to advertise, but honey, if I did, I would have had my family all up in it too. So what? And I loved them dearly and deeply and truly. And I loved my partner and I loved my children. Just because I include them in my employment sometimes doesn't mean a damn thing. Doesn't affect my love one bit. I wish you would say that. See what I'm saying? I don't know why people feel like they can pick on Shanann. Why why they feel, you know, there's some some energies they just feel like they can go after. I don't know why. I really don't. But I don't like it. <clears throat> That's the kind of person I am. It hurts my heart to see the innocent fucking picked on, bullied, trampled, mocked. It hurts my soul to see pure hearts done that way. You know, and I just feel like, well, I know my heart is soft and it's pure. And I've been in that position before, but I became fierce. I got stronger and stronger where I could hold my own. Where I'll get right back at a motherfucker. Or... As a wise, older person now, who is also spiritual, I will know my place and I will know where to choose my battles. Because these, this world is crazy. There's some crazy ass people in this world. Sometimes it's best to just keep your mouth shut and move on. Sometimes it's best to speak up and hold your ground. You just have to know where and when. But I had to come out of all that scared shy energy and 
I got that strong and assertive because of being held down in my past and abused in my past and taken advantage of in my past as a young girl and teen and young woman and different things. Think about it, you bashers, being ignorant. Look more deeply at people sometimes. Understand more of human psychology and human drives and question, well, perhaps before you just slap an ignorant judgment on somebody, a one-dimensional, mm, yeah, it was that. It's got to be that. Do you not even, you know, think about, does it not even occur to you the hardships that they could have had to overcome? The illness that Shanann had. Things perhaps in her youth that affected her. We all have insecurities. We all have things we want to work towards overcoming. And that gives us more drive and more drive and more drive. Just because she didn't lay down and fuss about it. And and I mean, that's why I'm wondering would these people have what are the what is their angle here? What would they have preferred her to do? Just be all pathetic and sickly and uh, well I'm I'm so self-conscious that I can't speak and um why is assertiveness and feeling yourself and why is that ridiculed and feared and hated so much is it triggering like you know what the hell but yeah, she took opportunities to do her work, to sell her products, because that was her career, that was her money, that was her income. So she took opportunities to do it when she could. And why not? She had those two cute little girls. So what? So she took photographs of them with the pro bar sometimes and had them in the videos. Even cuter. Very smart marketing move. I'm not saying throw your kids up there all the time. Don't have to do that either. But we are in the day and age of TikTok. And, you know, it just seems like right after Shanann was right on the verge of that. Now that's all you see is whole entire families with videos of their kids from infancy on up creating television shows on YouTube and on TikTok, just open books for the whole world to see. Entire families and, you know, people's kids and people doing all kinds of things. I want to know why the fuck Shanann Watts is still bashed and picked on and she was exploiting her children and she was always filming them and, oh my God, get off the camera and put the, you know, it was her fucking job. And furthermore, that's the day and age we're in. And she wasn't doing anything that most parents are doing all the time now. Round the clock with their TikToks and their YouTube channels and whatnot. Really? Get a grip. Shanann would have loved TikTok. And CC and Bella. I can just see it now. Like all the families that, like the dad and daughter duo, I forget their name. There's just so many cute kids and cute families. And now everybody's getting to display their talents and their, I forget the dad and daughter duo. They do the lip syncing and the dancing and they are just precious. I can just see CC and Bella. I would imagine that they would have loved TikTok. And I would imagine that Shanann, with her outgoing personality and with her sales and stuff, I would imagine that had she been allowed to live, she and the girls, that she would have just kept growing in her career and her online popularity. And she probably would have loved TikTok and so would the girls. And probably would have blown up on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah.
And so I'm going to clip this because it's gotten very long. And I'll probably make a part two to this. Given my energy and spirit. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I hope that sheds some perspective for some folks. About the hell. Well, I hate on a woman for her choice of job and career. And it's hard enough being a mother of two at that time and pregnant and trying to make money and, and have an income. And it's not selfish to have a dream for yourself and a, a vision for yourself of how you want your life to go and what you feel good doing for a career and a job. It's not selfish at all. Because that energy also impacts your children and spills over onto your husband and your children and your home and your whole life. So why not find something that you're happier doing that makes you feel alive and helps you grow and come into your own? All right. I'm pretty sure after I review this, I'm going to have more to add to it about the job part of it and bash why people bash her career and nitpick it and ask these silly ass questions. Um, you can be a mother and have a career and be self-employed and have some work to do while you are with your children. It can all work together. Did you know that? I don't get it. I don't get why they keep asking that question. Why can't she just be a mom? Why she always haven't taken an opportunity to push her product? To market her stuff? That's all she ever cared about was pushing her products. I tell you what, then. Why don't you fucking call in to work tomorrow? Try it. Same thing for a self-employed person. That was her fucking job. Damn right she was on her motherfucking hustle. Pushing her products. Didn't mean she loved her daughters any less. Didn't mean she loved her husband any less. It's like the equivalent of go on and call in off work tomorrow. Call into your job. Don't show up. Go to your job and don't do what needs to be done. Just stand there. Why is she pushing products? Why is she always taking an opportunity? Why do you go to work? Why do you even bother to show up? Can't you be a mom? Why can't you just be a mom to your children? Why do you go to work? Why are you always doing that job? Why are you always doing whatever it is that's required of you at work? All right, y'all. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Have a good one.